Hi and welcome to my review of Halloween 2018. This film follows Laurie Strode and her family where 40 years later on from the events that took place on that Halloween night in 1978 and now Michael Myers has once again managed to escape confinement and has come back to Haddonfield on another murder spree. So these trilogy of films basically carry on from the events of that original film and gets rid of all of the things that happen in between. So in this universe, only the events of the original ever occurred. If you're familiar with the Halloween franchise, you'll know that they created a lot of different timelines, different story arcs for the characters, most namely the one where Michael Myers and Laurie Strode are brother and sister. And I never liked that plot line. Uh, in the film, it felt like something that was rushed in there uh, at the very last minute it's kind of given to us in the film very late on and Laurie even never even gets that realization that that is the case and I've never really liked that it felt like it was just used as something to spice up that second film and make it have something unique so I do like here that they've got rid of that plot line and are just going off of the events from that first film the best thing I can say about this film is that I do think they picked a very good director to do the set of Halloween films. Whenever I first watched this, I binged through the whole franchise and I do remember thinking that this one was a noticeable step up in quality from some of those previous films. Even just from a directing and a cinematography standpoint, a lot of the way the scenes are framed, they just look really impressive, they have a good feel to them, they do flow very nicely and that is something that works really well in this film's favour. It creates a nice atmosphere, uh, everything is lit extremely well uh, and the film just from a directing standpoint is really well handled. A lot of the things they did with Michael Myers here made this really impressive. You know they had this really interesting one take when he's first arrived Haddonfield and he's out on Halloween night and this one take of him going into these various houses I think works really well. The other scene that comes to mind is where Alison and her friend have taken that short come home from that dance across the green with all those motion sensors going off and Michael is out there slowly coming up to them. The way it looks from a visual standpoint is really impressive and I loved what the director did with this here in the film. Another thing this film really does get right is the portrayal of Michael Myers. You've got James Drew Courtney here to play the shape as well as Nick Castle actually uh, for a few scenes which is quite interesting but it's a very very intimidating performance. He's got the aggressiveness and the viciousness that the role requires and you can't help but notice, having just recently watched the original, how tame that film is in comparison to this one. Uh, how brutal Michael Myers is and the level of violence. You can definitely see that change in film and particularly in horror in the last 40 years where things now, just as standard, are way more violent. Uh, and this is delivered really well in the performance here. It's not too over the top, it's handled just right. But I think if they try to play it too similar to that original film, I think it would feel unnecessarily tame in order to kind of recreate that same feel of Michael Myers from the original. I really like the mask design they have for Michael Myers as well. Kind of that very weathered look, uh, or very similar to that original mask they had just with all the weathering done to it as well. It's one thing that for some reason I have no idea why they couldn't fix in a lot of these Halloween films, the fact that the masks looked so ridiculous. Ones with these great big eye cutouts. You had ones that looked like super cheap Halloween shop masks with no sort of detail on them, nothing scary about them. And you know, when you've got millions of pounds going into these films centered around this one horror figure or horror icon, why would you not spend some of the money getting that mask right? I've never understood that about so many of these Halloween films. So I really like that this time around they managed to get that just right. So I really liked here the introduction of Laurie's granddaughter, Alison, uh, played by Andy Matichak. She's a character that is really quite nicely developed in this film and is someone we can 
find a way to connect with and go along this journey with. She's really the one that kind of brings a lot of the emotional depth to this film. She just has a little bit more sort of awareness uh, and an understanding of the people around her. So you feel like you're seeing things on her level. My problem is with characters like Laurie, which I'll get into later on this film, uh, in this film review, is her character, the way she's written, you can't really, really connect with her uh, as you maybe could in some of those earlier films. And a lot of these side characters, really, they feel like they've been here set up completely as cannon fodder for Michael Myers. So I do like that we have a character like Alison that we can go along this ride with. And she's a really great actress as well. So I think she was a really nice addition to bring in as a character in this franchise. So I really do have quite a lot of mixed elements to talk about in this film. The first of being Jamie Lee Curtis here as Laurie Strode. I think she's a good actress and I think she still plays the role that she's been given here really well. But there's something about the way she's been written in this film which does not entirely work for me. We've got this character that 40 years on has been dealing with this trauma, has never been able to, have never managed to get over the events of what happened on that Halloween night. And the amount that this, those events have affected her has basically dictated her entire life. She has dedicated everything to protecting herself against Michael Myers on the day that she believes he will inevitably, inevitably get out uh, from confinement. And she's let it destroy all these relationships in her life. She has a really bad relationship with her daughter. She has a sort of troubled relationship with Alison, the granddaughter as well. She lives in this house that's basically she's turned into like a bunker where she's been training and planning all for this one night. And to me, this did just seem just a little bit unrealistic. I much preferred her character development she got in H2O where she's this woman that's obviously troubled. She has a bit of an alcohol dependency, um, but is still a very much a functioning person, even though a lot of her relationships in her life have been complicated. But the way she's just kind of got on with it, changed her name and moved to a more secluded location where she gets on with work privately. I really liked that arc for her. And I found that I was able to connect with her character a lot more. Whereas here, it feels too disconnected from who she was in that first film. I do get that it's 40 years later and obviously people change you know, an incredible amount over that time. But there's just nothing really here for me about that character that I'm able to link between the two of them. And to be fair, I don't know what it's like to have escaped the clutches of a serial killer uh, like she has in this film. But just the way she portrays this the way the character is written uh, to have handled these events, how insane she seems in, so, seems in so many of these scenes, it was very difficult for me to fully buy and really get into this character. One thing I had a hard time understanding in this film is why a lot of the characters and Laurie herself talk about this kind of connection that her and Michael Myers have. You get it with this doctor character who talks about oh my god you're, you're Laurie like we need you like he needs to hear her thoughts on her seeing Michael again and the way she believes it's kind of all leading back to her whereas if you follow the story arc and the events of that first film she was really only in that situation and all of that chaos out of bad luck like Michael Myers turns up to another house she goes over to find out what's going on and then she gets caught up in all the craziness that ensues from there. She was ne Michael never came to see her. And the fact that even in this storyline, they're not related. I don't understand the link particularly well between these two characters, other than her being the one that survived that night, which fair enough, there's that. But to me, the way the characters address it in this film, it's like they're still talking about them as these siblings that have this connection. Whereas I don't believe, if you follow this story, I don't believe they have the kind of connection that all the other characters are insinuating that they do. So one particular talking point from this film 
is this character of Dr. Sartain that they've effectively brought in to replace that character of Dr. Loomis. And they have chosen to do something quite interesting with this character here, where he was one of Loomis's students. And rather than Loomis, where they have the similarities that they are, in fact, both kind of interested and fascinated by Michael Myers. But Loomis was motivated by never having uh, Michael Myers ever being released, ever being around people again. Whereas Dr. Sartain is just completely fascinated by this character's actions. And in one of the earlier scenes, even seems jealous that he wasn't ever able to see Michael outside of confinement so that he could actually study his behaviour. And I guess as well, I like that the introduction of this character and his arc where it leads to this twist, it means that you have quite a creative way for getting Michael Myers back out onto the streets again. Uh, even though obviously it doesn't explain that until the twist, I do like that they have that rather than using sort of some kind of cheap way of getting him out of there. I do like having this character being behind this. The real problem here is the way they decide to actually execute the twist with Dr. Sartain in these scenes where he's out with the sheriff. They've knocked down Michael Myers. Allison's in the back with them. He gets out, out of nowhere, just kills the detective uh, so that he can keep Michael Myers alive because of his obsession he has. And when he throws on that Michael Myers mask and gets up and is looking in the car and Alison has that what the fuck look on her face. That's exactly the same look that I had on my face watching the scene in this film. The fact as well that this whole story arc ends about five minutes later when they're riding in the police car and then Michael Myers wakes up in the back kills Dr. Sartain and then that's it. That's that whole plot arc completely gone and it feels like it doesn't mean anything to the story. The fact that Laurie has no idea about the fact that any of this has even occurred, it just ends up being a strange little piece of this film um, and it really doesn't work that well. Definitely one of the worst things about this film is the amount of humour they decided to put throughout this film. Not to mention to start with it's a Halloween film, so having lots of humour constantly uh, interjected into these scenes, especially when it breaks up tense moments, feels really out of place. But just the type of humour they use here feels really tonally off as well. So I know overall this sounds like I'm being uh, really quite critical of the film, uh, so you might be a bit surprised by the rating I'm giving it, but that's because this is still a very, very entertaining film. And the things I like about it, I really do like quite a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things to recommend about this film. It's just a little bit disappointing, especially when I first saw this, considering how good it could have been. I feel it does let down uh, in quite a few areas, just because of how good this could have been. Uh, and I feel just with like a little cha a few changes here and there to the script, uh, getting rid of that uh, humour, um, you know, tightening up a lot of that dialogue, you could have had a really, really solid Halloween film here. But despite its problems and having seen it a handful of times now, I do still think it's a really enjoyable movie. And it is one of the better uh, Halloween films in the franchise, in my opinion. So overall, I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5 rating. So please let me know in the comments below what you think of Halloween 2018 and what you liked and didn't like about this film. I'm going to leave a card here of the review I did for John Carpenter's original Halloween, which I revisited recently, getting ready for this uh, final chapter that David Gordon Green's bringing us at the weekend. I'll be releasing my Halloween Kills review later this week and then ends next week when it's released. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time.